What is up, Bills fans, Bills Mafia, the Buffalo Bills Nation? I'm Thomas. This is the Buffalo Fanatics. You guys already know what it is. Today, I'm back with a brand new video. I'm going to be recapping the Buffalo Bills 2018-2019 regular season, looking back, and then stepping into 2019. Let's get right into it. So before we get into anything about this video, I just want to let you guys know that I got a brand new camera, a DLSR camera, my phone wasn't doing the job, wasn't getting it done, so I decided to get a brand new camera for Christmas, and, and hopefully the quality uh, paired with my microphone, my expensive microphone, hopefully you guys get a great, uh, hopefully the video is great is what I'm trying to say. So without any further introduction, let's get right into the video. So what better place to start than actually looking back at last season, breaking the playoff drought. That was just unbelievable, amazing. Speechless is the one word that comes to my mind when talking about that. The Bengals game, the Bengals-Ravens game, Andy Dalton, much love for you, brother. Just awesome, awesome uh, time to be alive if you're a Bills fan, breaking that 17 season drought. Then we go into free agency, and really all I want to recap here is just the quarterback position. We decided to go on free agency and offseason. We drafted Josh Allen, we had Nathan Peterman on the squad, and we also picked up AJ McCarron on about a $5 million deal per year. Uh, we ended up at the beginning of training camp and preseason. I thought we looked pretty good. Uh, I think we actually botched the quarterback position, if you ask me, because Josh Allen got no first team reps. It was just not a good preseason for Josh Allen as far as getting first team reps. And then we traded off AJ McCarron, the only veteran on the roster. Then we had a young Nathan Peterman and a, a very young Josh Allen. They're both babies <laughs> in the league. And I don't know why a McDermott and Brandon Bean thought that they could get away with having two young QBs and no veteran to mentor them. I don't know what happened, but then the first game of the season came along and we got destroyed 47 to three against the Ravens, a horrible game. And after that game, Nathan Peterman, you got, you got to go. You got benched. Josh Allen, the rookie, came in with no veteran leadership to tell him what to do. Then the Chargers game, Vontae Davis retires at halftime. Yeah, okay, bud. My body is not good enough. I can't I can't compete in this league. No, more like you see the team we got and you said, I'm out. See ya. He can stay on that list with uh, Anquan Bolden as far as I'm concerned. What a bum. And then we got our ass handed to us again. 31 to 20 against the Chargers. Just defense couldn't get our foot in the door even. I mean, we couldn't even stay in those games. And then week three came along and the Buffalo Bills somehow were, I don't even know, maybe 16 point underdogs, something like that. And somehow destroyed the Vikings 27 to six. In my opinion, this was Josh Allen's third best game of the season. An unbelievable performance, hurtling Anthony Barr, a Pro Bowl linebacker, diving for the goal line at like the five. Allen can fly. This is when Air Allen became a thing. It was an awesome week. Then we moved into week four and took on the Packers in Green Bay, zero to 22. Allen's worst game in my opinion, horrible game. Then we headed back to New Era Field in week five, taking on the Titans. We somehow take the dub in that and beat the Titans 12 to 13 on a last second field goal from Steven Housh money. It was an unbelievable victory. I was there at the game. It was crazy to win on a last second field goal. Then week six rolled around and Josh Allen, this was his game where he was starting to kind of feel the offense a little bit. The game slowed, started to slow down for him a little bit and he got injured. And I think that it would have been a very close game uh, if he would have stayed in it. And I think we could have actually won that game if Allen stayed in it. Um, but Nathan Peterman comes in after Josh Allen gets an elbow injury and throws a touchdown. You're like, this is awesome. And then the next drive throws a pick six and we lose the game. What a horrible game. 
uh, from Nathan Peterman to, to just blow it like that. Just horrible. I mean, it was total heartbreak that game. And then in weeks seven to nine, we had Derek Anderson on the roster and he played those three games and we scored 20 points over those three weeks. We played the Colts, got blown out five to 37. We played the Patriots, although our defense kept us in it, we got destroyed 25 to six. And then we played the Bears and we just got lit up 41 to nine. How embarrassing is that? But then some light at the end of the tunnel for our second string quarterback for the next two years. Matt Barkley comes into uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey and says, uh-uh, we ain't losing today, buddy. We crushed the Jets 41 to 10 with Matt Barkley. What an unbelievable performance. It was a great game. Let's just leave it at that. After this game though, Peterman was officially released. Week 11 was the bye week. Not much really happened. Week 12, Josh Allen's first game back shuts up Jalen Ramsey, we get the dub, 21-24, and now we can talk all we want about Jalen Ramsey. Week 13, we played the Dolphins. We honestly could have won this game. Very, very close game. If Allen's pass was maybe like three or four yards deeper and Clay makes that catch, that's a touchdown, and we win that game. So very, very close game. I think this, in my opinion, this was Allen's second best game of the season. Was a fantastic game and uh, very, very close. Zay Jones also had a very, very big day. Kelvin Benjamin was also released after this, and that was just awesome to see that. In week 14, the Buffalo Bills took on the New York Jets in Buffalo, unfortunately lost 27 to 23, but it was a close game, and this was one of Allen's best game, if not its top five performance for him as far as the season goes, maybe his fourth or fifth best game uh, of the season. He played tremendous special teams, blew it. Could have won this game too, but special teams just botched this game. In week 15, the Buffalo Bills took on the Lions and we ended up winning 13 to 14. Josh Allen in the fourth quarter had a fourth quarter comeback victory, throwing that, I think it was like 40 or 50 yard bomb to uh, Robert Foster for the game winning touchdown. An awesome game, wasn't Allen's best, but when you secure the dub, that's all that matters. In week 16, we took on the uh, dreaded New England Patriots in New England, and we lost this game. Our team could not find any momentum. Uh, they ran all over us. It was just a horrible game. We lost 24 to 12, and we're just gonna act like that game never happened, if you know what I'm saying. And then week 17, in my opinion, Allen's best performance, Kyle Williams retires, tears. <laughs> it just total total sadness, but great career. Big shout out to Kyle. Man, you gotta love that guy. Uh, Kyle Williams, just an unbelievable athlete, amazing player, huge team first guy. We are going to miss you, Kyle Williams. Uh, that's all I gotta say. Josh Allen had five touchdowns though in this game, which gave us the victory over the Dolphins, 42 to 17. A great end to the season uh, very good game to go to if you were there so since the end of the season our special teams coach Danny Crossman our offensive line coach Juan Castillo and our wide receivers coach Terry Rabisky have all been terminated from their contracts I'm very happy to see them all go see ya not gonna miss ya wouldn't want to be ya. very very happy that they're gone uh, now moving into the overall thoughts on the season Josh Allen he is our guy if he can continue to improve, I think he's going to be huge uh, for Buffalo. Get this man an O-line. Our O-line is tremendously bad, especially our right side. Get him a right tackle. Get him a right guard. Get him a center. We need these pieces put in place for Allen to be protected. We need to protect our quarterback. Looking at the wide receivers, uh, I was encouraged at the end of the season. I, I, I liked the the uh, connection between Zay Jones and Allen and Robert Foster and Allen. I think both of them, uh, Foster and Zay, had pretty good seasons, and I think they're only going to continue to get better. Um, I would love to see the Bills go out and get a wide receiver one in the draft, maybe at number nine with a guy like DK Metcalf, uh, AJ Brown, or uh, Marquise Brown. 
Uh, those guys, I would like to see the Bills uh, be on a Bills roster. Maybe even Anthony Johnson, the wide receiver out of UB, uh, also would like to see him maybe on the roster. Uh, UB connection, Buffalo, I kind of would like that. Uh, our tight end position definitely needs some work. Kroom should be the only guy to come back. However, I do think Charles Clay will come back just because of the number situation. If you look at it, um, it doesn't really make sense to cut him as far as numbers go. His season wasn't the best, but they might just bring him back and find a tight end the year after uh, to take his place. Uh, running backs also had a decent year, not the best. Shady didn't have a good year, and that's pretty much because, probably because uh, of two factors. He kind of lost a step. As he got up there in age, he's already, he's 30, so he's you know he kind of lost a little bit of a step. You can you can tell. Plus, the offensive line couldn't create any holes for him any game. Just a weak offensive line. Uh, it led to him not being able to produce like he used to. Chris Ivory also had a decent year. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, Marcus Murphy had a decent year. Leave it at that. Got uh, on IR, but he was pretty good. I'd like to see them pick up another guy in the draft, maybe in the later rounds, like fifth or sixth round, pick up a running back. Um, and then also, I liked uh, Keith Ford. He also played decent at the end of the season. Um, I'd like to see him back on the practice squad next year. Now moving to the defensive side of the ball, our defense is legit. Ended the season, second overall uh, defense, which is huge. The Ravens beat us out by 19 yards. Uh, very, very impressive season from our defense. Hyde and Poyer are still elite. I love the trio we got going on in Trey White, Levi Wallace, uh, Teron Johnson. Did you guys know that Levi Wallace was actually the uh, highest graded uh, cornerback rookie uh, by per PFF, Pro Football Focus, which is just unbelievably awesome. Love to see that. Teron Johnson also had a great year at the slot corner position. Uh, just, just great. Uh, fantastic. Uh, to see those three guys shining, uh, it really helps out our defense. Matt Milano had a season. Tremaine Edmonds improved throughout the season. Those two, uh, plus Zoe for the next season if we resign him. Uh, maybe even a young outside linebacker to fill Zoe's spot on most uh, snaps. I don't know what they're going to do, but Milano and Edmonds are going to be a problem. I loved what I saw from the run defense uh, from Edmonds. And I love the coverage skills that Matt Milano brings to this defense. It's going to help us out tremendously moving forward. Um, I still think we need to beef up our defensive line. Uh, since Kyle's now gone, I don't know. Jordan Phillips thinks he can stay in Buffalo and fill Kyle's spot. I'm not sure uh, if that can happen, if, he, if that's going to be what happens. I would like to see the Bills go out and sign another free agent uh, defensive tackle or draft a guy in the draft. Maybe if DK Metcalf uh, and Jonah Williams aren't there, is what people are saying the Bills are, are going to go look at. Maybe if just, just so happens that Ed Oliver or like a couple guys from uh, Clemson are there on the board. Maybe we go ahead and grab a DT. Uh, we could definitely use a star uh, defensive lineman in that interior uh, to help us out now after we lost Kyle. I love the way that Leslie Frazier's defense stayed strong and they finished strong and that was very key. I also was very, very impressed at the end of the season, towards the end of the season with Dayball. He is definitely going to be back. I would be very, very shocked if he got released. Um, I, I think that he's going to be a, a pretty big part moving forward. Um, and next season, definitely, if we have a lot more talent, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how he performs with this offense. I think they're only going to get better, especially because Allen's just... His, improve, his improvement since the beginning of the season is just unbelievable. Uh, you love to see it. Um, it's just a great season at the end of the season um, for Dable. We also got a couple free agents, and I don't know if we're going to sign them, but I will name them off one by one for you guys. Uh, Ryan Groy, Jordan Mills, Taiwan Jones, Logan Thomas, Jeremiah Searles, Deontay Thompson, John Miller, Matt Darr, Lafayette Pitts, Eddie Yarborough, Dean Marlowe, Victor Bolden Jr., Mike Love, Damari Scott, and Reed Ferguson. Uh, also, I think Shaq Lawson has a fifth-year uh, option uh, to his contract. Uh, Lorenzo Alexander and Jordan Phillips are all free agents. In my opinion, the only ones that I really like to re-sign back are uh, Shaq Lawson uh, on that fifth-year contract. I'd like to see him get signed back up. Zoe, I'd like to see him come back for one more year. He'd need that, uh, that veteran leadership on defense, and I really want to see him come back. Jordan Phillips, another guy that I was very impressed by during the season. 
Uh, so I would like to see him back. Reed Ferguson, I think, will also be back. So I would like to see him back just as a long snapper position. Lock that in. Um, and, and probably the last guy that I would probably want to bring back is Taiwan Jones for the sole purpose of that captain uh, for special teams. Uh, you know, as we saw this season, special teams was huge uh, for us in some games where they just, they, it just didn't work. And that was the reason we lost the game, especially that Jets game that we played in Buffalo. It was just not a good game uh, because of our special teams. And that was what killed us. Could have been a win. Uh, could have finished seven and nine, but special teams failed us. And that's where we need a guy with some veteran leadership uh, to uh, propel us forward in 2019. So that's pretty much going to do it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up down below. Comment your opinions. I want to know what you guys think about this video. Anything that I missed, anything that you want to tell me, uh, I'll read some of your guys' comments later. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing Buffalo Bills content. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Go Bills and peace.